Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel. My name is Maria Korolev. I'm the editor here at Metastellar. And are you looking for some free science fiction and fantasy books to get you through this weekend? We've got them. Today we have um, our number one book, which is a historical fantasy romance set in Roman times under Caesar. But before we get to that, we've got four of the books to get through. And also, I want to thank reviews editor Krista Noland and community members E.S. Foster, Tim McHugh, Terry Wells, and Lilivet Dominguez Torres for helping me out with all the reviews. And E.S. Foster and Terry Wells are here with us today. Hi, Emma. Hi, Terry. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So glad to see you. Um, so, guys, I'm actually uh, back. I just got off the plane from Peru. I was at a conference in Lima this week. I gave a keynote speech on artificial intelligence. And if you want to get a little a, a little bit of an idea of what I talked about, there's a video about it that I posted this week from my hotel room in Lima about what writers need to know about generative AI. So check that out. I'm going to post a link to that in the description below as well. But yeah, I have a day job where I cover enterprise technology and I've been focusing on artificial intelligence and generative artificial intelligence these last few years. So yeah, okay, so let's get into it. Uh, today is March 22nd. The books that we're gonna be talking about are all free, but we could not guarantee how long the books will stay free. So if you see something you like, grab it. Um, and if you don't want to miss any of these books every single Friday, subscribe to our newsletter or subscribe to this channel. And um, that way you won't you won't miss it every single Friday afternoon. We we do this. OK, and the link to the article and to all the books is in the description box description box below. For those who are new, Meta Stellar um, here is an online magazine of speculative fiction. All the content is always free for our readers. We publish original short fiction, reprints, excerpts, essays, books, reviews. Uh, we are currently in the middle of our March submission cycle. So if you are a science fiction or fantasy or horror author, submit your short stories. The window closes on March 31st and we pay eight cents a word. And we're also currently in the process of serializing our first novel, Gods and Monsters by E.E. E. King which I personally think is going to win all the awards. And the fourth installment is up. And the author is also reading it for us on YouTube every week as the ins installments post. So check out that playlist. And I'm going to add that link to the description box below as well. Okay, let us get into it. Let's start with book number five. Here we go. And the title is Seduced by Starlight by Sarah Ivy Hill. And it's the fourth of six books in the Warrior Kings of Alioth, which is a sci-fi romance series. The other books are four to five dollars each, and they're in Kindle Unlimited. Kindle Unlimited is where you pay 12 bucks a month and you read all the books you want, kind of like a Netflix for books. And we've reviewed other books by the author before. Kristen Noland read this for us, and it's about Phoenix, who is an alien royal, and he's hiding a woman who escaped from a transport ship. Uh, she was kidnapped from Earth and brought to Phoenix's planet against her will, and everyone is looking for her, and he's hiding her in his palace. And um, luckily, he's the one who's in charge of the search, so she's safe for now. And Phoenix thinks that she is fated to be, be his queen, but he's keeping it a secret from everyone, including her. So he's a diplomat and he, he's trying to advocate for species to become citizens of his planet because his father destroyed this particular species planet. And there's chemistry between them and they're growing to love each other. And he wants to protect her and keep her from his own. And she wants to open a beauty salon so that she too can become a citizen of this planet. So it switches back. First person view. First in 
you know, her point of view, then his point of view, and so forth. And Kristen says she was a little confused by the story. It's not her preferred genre. There's a lot of backstory and planets and rulers and species. Um, and she was having trouble following it. But this is book four, and the author is trying to catch us up on what happened. She says it's not her cup of tea and won't be finishing this book. I think I read some of the other books in the series because they were on on the Free Friday list. Because, like, all these names are sounding familiar. And it's a common trope to have a human woman somehow fated to be with this alien warrior or alien king or something. And for some reason, it's, like, super popular right now. And I, I sympathize with Kristen. It's not my particular thing either. But there are people who love these books and who just eat them up like potato chips. If you like these books, I suggest you start with the first one because there's a lot of politics in them and, um, you know, a lot of action happening. So you might want to start at the beginning. Um, and if you're a Kindle Unlimited subscriber, it's not going to cost you anything. Um, but if you're buying them all up, then pick this one up while it's free. Okay, next we have A Highlander for Hannah by Mary Warren, the first of four books in the Mystic Falls fantasy romance series. The other books are $5 each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And it's the author's first time on our list. Terry Wells read this for us. Terry, what did you think of this book? It's exactly the kind of book you want to read if this is the kind of thing you like. But let me tell you about it. Our story opens with Hannah Glenn getting unfairly dressed down by her boss. Now it becomes very clear that Hannah is an excellent lawyer who's been busting her butt for years for this law firm, but she's been regularly overlooked for promotions and treated really unfairly. So she finally finds her spine and quits. And then she goes home and stands up to the lazy man baby of a boyfriend she's been dating for a year and breaks up with him. Now, this isn't like her. She's normally a planner and a list maker, but this way she finally got out of her self-imposed trap. So where does she go? From her Brooklyn walk-up apartment to her parents' farmhouse upstate to get her head together and spend some time with Poppy, her best friend since third grade, where we learn in their discussion that Hannah became a lawyer really to please her father, and though, yeah, she's really good at it, it never made her heart sing. What she really wants to do is stay home, write romance novels, and be romanced by a hunk of a man. Now, who can't relate to that? <laughs> so, planner Hannah and free spirit Poppy go to a renaissance festival where Poppy talks Hannah into getting a love spell from a mysterious fortune teller to bring Hannah the man of her dreams. Well, Hannah poo-poos the whole thing, but she does agree to perform the ritual later that evening as kind of a mind clearing exercise to help her think about what she's going to do next so the next day when she goes out to the barn to tend the horses she discovers that the spell has delivered the man of her dreams Graham mcneil a large red-headed highlander from the year 1745 this was clearly not what science believing hannah had bargained for nor had graham who hails from a culture where they burn witches and women don't dress in leggings and hoodies <laughs> Worse, these two unwilling companions go to visit the fortune teller at the festival uh, who tells them that Graham can't be sent back to his proper time right away because he was brought forward during an equinox, so he must be sent back during an equinox, which means that Hannah and Graham are stuck with each other for the next six months. Hannah doesn't want to babysit another man baby, and Graham is quite convinced he can take care of himself and doesn't need the help of a woman. If you can't see where this is going, you haven't read very many romances. I like Hannah. She's strong, competent, and independent, but still learning how to assert herself. She's also fat, the author's word, not mine, and has had to contend with people judging her for it. Uh, Graham, despite cultural differences, has a kind heart, but also a lot to learn. 
what I one of the things I loved about this is that the story reverses the usual trope of time travel romances I've seen, bringing the hero forward in time rather than sending the heroine backward in time. I will include a caveat. My inner copy editor had some minor quibbles, but nothing that's getting in the way of my enjoyment. Uh, plus, the author uses some good turns of phrase, such as when she talks about Hannah knowing her worth, but knowing your worth and demanding it from others were not the same thing. Or when Hannah is tired of dating men who required more parenting than partnering. I'm here for the journey. And if you like romances with a twist and a touch of magic, you'll enjoy the book. I forgot to introduce you because this is your first time here. So, okay. so Terry is an editor. She's got like 17 years of experience. And um, you worked for Hatchet, right? Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Okay. <laughs> I knew there was an H in there somewhere. <laughs> Good enough. And she's helping us with this year's anthology. So we have two anthologies out already. We have year one and year two. And Terry's helping us make year three anthology. And so is Emma. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be coming out soon. Okay, let's move on to book number three. And let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see it. This is Forged of Fire by Stacey Von Haggard. And it's the first of two books in a fantasy romance, The Forge series. Book two is seven bucks and is in Kindle Unlimited. And it's the author's second time on our free fighter list. We reviewed this book before. So this book starts, and I read this one. I read the beginning of this one. The book starts in uh, 776 BCE with um, Xander watching a beautiful woman walking up to a pool of lava and her two sons are looking on. And there's priests and warriors around and a large crowd of people watching, as well as Xander's father, the king. The woman takes off her robe and they throw her naked into the lava. And then a bunch of weird magical stuff happens. And I couldn't tell if she survived or not because of the magical stuff. But probably she died because she was thrown into uh, some lava. But anyway, so that was the prologue of the book. Then we switch to the present day in Italy, and we're in our actual Earth, not in a fantasy world. And a guy named Ash has been around for over a thousand years. He used to be human, but now he's a fire dancer, and he has the ability to manipulate fire. He's been immortal since he turned 25, and now he's tremendously wealthy. Every decade or so, he creates a new business, builds it up, then sells it off. And his current company is now 11 years old, so he's looking for someone to sell it off to before people start asking uncomfortable questions about how he stays looking so young. Then he finds out that there's a woman on Earth who can manipulate both water and fire, who has the same name as Ash's mother, and this woman is guarded by an angel. Then we switch to the point of view of Stefan, who's trying to keep a clumsy, red-headed woman alive. So I'm guessing Stefan is the angel, and the woman is the woman that Ash just found out about. Then a vampire shows up and follows the woman down the street. Stefan steps in and kills the vampire in a particularly gruesome way. And I like the beginning of this book. There's a lot of action, some hints at skullgug skullduggery. There's a war shaping up. And the romance wasn't too heavy-handed. I don't like a lot of romance in books, but if there's other stuff in there too, I might stick with it. So, but I don't think I'll be sticking with this book because last week, I don't know if you guys remember this, if you saw the video, maybe you do, there was a um, 100 sci-fi books being given away for free just for a couple of days. And I went through the list and I grabbed a whole bunch of those books and I've been reading them on the plane while flying to Peru and back. And some of those books are so great and I still have a bunch left to read. So I'm probably going to be sticking with those instead. Okay, let's move on to book number two on today's list, Oathbreaker by Aaron Hodges. This is the first of three books 
by New York Times bestselling author. And the epic fantasy series that it's part of is called The Legend of the Gods. The other books are $6 each, and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And the author has been on our free Friday list a lot. And um, Emma read this for us. Emma, what did you think of this book? Yeah, so as you might know by now, I really enjoy epic fantasy, so I was super excited to get into this. So I was immediately, I delved into this world. It's the world of Oathbreaker, and that's the beginning. This is the beginning of a trilogy here. I'm really excited. So in this book, in this world, there are three nations. They're all under control of this guy known only as the Tsar for right now. He rose to power after all of the gods disappeared. And the gods were sort of like the bringers of magic. So they were the one who let everyone wield magic in certain ways. But now that they've gone, magic has since been outlawed. So whoever wields it needs to either turn themselves in or die. That's the Tsar's ultimatum here. So throughout the Tsar's rule, there have been multiple battles being fought over the centuries, trying to take down all these magic users, who are also called magickers. So the story begins with a prologue. It focuses on the warrior Devin. He's considered one of the best warriors because he is able to just take on everything that the Tsar tells him to do. He is a very expert battle strategist. And he's killed a lot of people for it, especially with like the help of his Warhammer, which I also thought was really cool. But as he rises through the ranks, even in the prologue, you get this glimpse that maybe this guy doesn't exactly like what he's doing. And he probably has a problem with all this horrible stuff that he's doing to innocent people. And nowhere is that more apparent than at the end of the prologue. Because when we first start, we wake up in a camp with Devin. The Tsar is saying that there's going to be a celebration, a festival of some kind. Basically, it turns out that the last of the few magic users in the city that they had just overthrown, they're sitting there tied up, forced to watch as bunches of dragons come out of the mountains and lay waste to the remains of the city they had just overthrown, slaughtering hundreds of innocents along the way. So throughout the entire prologue, there was a lot of Devin's headspace where he explained that there's all this stuff that's happening, but he's not really comfortable with it. And now that he's seen this specific thing, I feel like it's going to be an inciting incident. He's eventually going to break away from the czar. But the story then skips to five years later. We start focusing on a girl named Elena. So her brother is a magic user. But the way it works in this world is that you are just randomly endowed with magic one day. It's not something that you do to get. It's not. It's just something that happens. And a lot of people really don't want that to happen because they don't want to die. So Elena is trying to escape the village that she's living in with her brother because just at that moment when her POV like first is introduced to us, um, somebody automatically in the village becomes endowed with fire magic. It just randomly happens. And so he is running around trying to stop like the fire that's consuming his entire body. Obviously he can't because he doesn't know how to use magic. And Elena is really worried because that means the stalkers are going to come. And the stalkers are people employed under the czar's rule who can detect magic. So they go and they hunt all the magic users. So Elena's thinking, okay, well, now's the time for us to escape. So she and her brother are going to head to Northland, which is another nation way far in the distance of this world. And there's actually a really cool world map here at the beginning of this book as well. So they're trying to get to where magic users are safe. And it's I think it's pretty obvious that she and Devin are going to cross paths eventually. And as I mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of epic fantasy. I found that um, the mysteriousness of how people gain magic against their will, I thought that was really cool. Because it's like, how do you, like, how does that work? It makes you, like, ask all these different questions. It makes you want to know more. It's like, how does, what does this magic entail? So I was really excited about that. And the, in general, there was a lot of information, but it wasn't overwhelming to read. I felt like in the prologue, it was a little bit heavy on exposition, but... At the same time, that was just Devin sort of going through his head on different things that have happened, so I could kind of forget that. So if you want to delve into a fantasy trilogy over the weekend, I would definitely recommend this series. Thanks. Uh, we also had um, another one of our community members, Lilivet, 
um, reading this book as well. And she says that she loved everything she read in the first few chapters. She said it was intriguing, intense. Um, and she loves how the characters were introduced and how we see the world through a different point of view. And she really liked the author's writing. And so she says, Lilivet says she's going to be sticking with this book and can't wait to see what happens next. Okay, so before we go on to book number one, I want to thank our Patreon supporters. Let me make that a little bigger for you guys so you can see their names. These are wonderful people. Thank you so much. We are all volunteer run. So the way we're able to pay for the original fiction that we publish is through donations. So if you want to help us publish original fiction, all the money goes to writers. And we also um, get money from uh, things like the anthology sales and merch. And the links to the anthologies and merch is in the description box below. But most of the money comes from Patreon. You guys rock. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We literally would not exist without you. Okay, and now book number one on today's list. Justina, Daughter of Spartacus by Ryan Liu. The first of seven books in the Justina saga. It's a historical romance series set in Roman times. The other books are, are $6 each, but they are in Kindle Unlimited. And Tim McHugh read this for us. But um, uh, Emma, you're going to tell us what he wrote, right? Yeah. So what did he think of this book? Tim starts out, he says, this book is a story of the secret child of Spartacus who grows up in the elite class of the Roman Empire as Caesar as building his diocese. So even though I didn't read this book, that sounds incredibly interesting. And Tim also says he loves everything about Rome. So this is right up his alley. He loves the politics, the warfare, the secret plots, that kind of thing. So the first couple of chapters, it takes us through this perspective of a group of slaves they've attempted to escape they've murdered their masters finally because they've just had enough they've been treated like subhuman their entire life and i imagine a bunch of horrible stuff happens in this first chapter so it immediately makes you just delve right into it and they've taken this opportunity to escape they are nearly out of rome but they run into a roman legion so the soldiers murder all of them drag like a few Romanian ones actually away to present to Caesar. So then Tim says that the third chapter cuts to an elite family's household where a brother and sister are sparring. So this sister is I think the offspring of Spartacus here. She displays superior swordplay. She downs her brother easily. So it's easy to see like yeah this is going to be the main character. She actually sounds pretty cool. Tim also says she's fierce, but kind, especially to the slaves, and she stands up for them against her brother, who isn't quite as nice. And Tim also says, I usually find a lot to complain about in my reviews, but not this time. This book is great, its pacing is fast, we don't lose any details, the subject matter is gritty, the writing is eloquent, the setup suggests the plot is heading for complex political intrigue, and that's something that Tim says he just can't get enough of, so he's definitely going to continue reading this one. All right. Thanks, Emma. Uh, if you guys want to join us to read these free Friday books, email me. My email is in the description box below. If you want to hire um, Emma or Terry to help you edit your book, their contact, their contact information is in the description box below as well. And um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. We just passed 500 subscribers. And we're on the verge of being able to monetize our YouTube channel, which means that we'll be able to bring in some more money to publish even more original fiction, which would just be awesome. Thank you, everybody, so much. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Emma, for joining me today. And I hope to see both of you and all our lovely readers next Friday. I love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.